So today we'll continue with our message series, Established. Offering baskets are located at the entrance of the sanctuary. We also have an option for online giving as well. Please visit the website www.thechurchgrady.org. Children's Church is for those up to second grade. When prompted, please exit quickly and quietly with your children's church leader. If you need any assistance during worship service, please see one of our ushers in the back. They'll get you where you need to go. We have several events that are currently happening at the church. October 24th, next Sunday, is Children's Sunday. Children, if you have not been assigned a job and you would like to have a job, please see me after worship or meet me in the sanctuary next Sunday at 1015. October 30th, the youth will be at Elevate. Come out and support our youth as they fry up some Oreos, moon pies, Snickers, and a couple other things. October 31st is Fall Family Fun at 1400. We will have a chili cook-off right after worship, as well as fall festival activities. Ministry team reports are due Sunday, October 31st. And then we will have an advisory board meeting right after worship on November 7th. We have several volunteer needs in our church. If you would like more information on how you can volunteer, please see me. For a full list of our announcements, please visit the website. Now, let's prepare our hearts for worship. of the darkness you're the light that guides me through our eyes are on you you are near to the broken the weak find the strength in you our eyes are on you in the madness you're the peace that comes my soul our eyes are on you you bring hope to the hopeless you're the love that won't let go our eyes are on you we lift our eyes to you where our help comes from our love is found in you Jesus and Lord of all, our lips are eyes to you, exalted one, exalted one. In the midst, in the midst of the darkness, you're the light that guides me through, our eyes are on you. You are near to the broken, the weak find the strength in you, our eyes are on you, we lift our eyes to you, where our help comes from, our love is found in you, Jesus Lord of all, we lift our eyes to you, exalted one. One. Your promise, your promise stands, your love endures, nothing can 
to the building at 1400 I'm looking for the church yeah thank you that was that was that was good that was better that was much better um, welcome to the boy band we're, we're, <laughs> we're missing the girls there so they should have boy band we're thankful for those I'll be here all week I'll be here all week uh, uh, we appreciate those of you that are here uh, it is fall break for some some of you are you guys still in fall break you're done and in. All right. But uh, we do appreciate those. And, and you know what? When it's when you have fall break, enjoy fall break. Okay. But after fall break, come back. All right. Uh, and same deal. Those of you, I'm talking to them, I guess, uh, uh, people on camera. If you're feeling sick, stay at home. Okay. But when you're feeling well, come on back. All right. And uh, I guess that I might mention that later on about coming home. But um, we're getting to the tail end of Establish, this message series where we're looking at what it means to uh, become rooted and stay established in the love of God, and uh, what a beautiful place to be. Next Sunday is Children's Sunday. Um, uh, I will not be here. Uh, I'll be doing a memorial service down in uh, Gainesville, Florida next, next Sunday, but the children, I assume, have it all taken care of, and they'll take care of these people well. Okay. You know, come, please come support the kids. Let me say it again. Please come and support the kids. Um, that's next Sunday during the 1030 worship service. And then the next Sunday is the fall family fun at 1400 chili cook off um, immediately after. So plan on staying um, to help. And that's uh, that's not an exhibition. It is a competition. Right. I mean, there's you know, there's a prize. All right. So uh, come and, and help vote for. The best chili, and uh, there's trunk or treat. We still need cars and stuff, uh, people that would be willing. So Kayla's down here if uh, if you need any information on that. Uh, thanks to Living Bridges for the clothing exchange yesterday. We appreciate uh, y'all uh, helping take care of that yesterday. Um, uh, had a note. Uh, please continue to pray for our children as they prepare for next week. Uh, and I'll add in here that I'll be gone. Uh, the memorial service is for Joyce uh, Bush. That's April Darcy's mom. Um, so I'll just be praying for all of them. Uh, a lot of you have shared praises. You've shared prayer concerns and uh, what how wonderful it is as a church family, brothers and sisters in, in Christ, that we can share those things. But there are some things that we kind of, we, we're not as open about. How many of you are like me and you got some unspoken stuff? He hears those as well. Let's take it all to him this morning. Lord, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for loving us the way that you do. How wonderful it is to be in your presence this morning. You have heard our call to you for help. You called us to come closer, and we've heard. We've accepted the cleansing water of baptism, and we love celebrating that with brothers and sisters as they come into to the faith. 
You loved us in spite of ourselves and have called us to live in unity with you and others. Grant us the wisdom, the discernment, and the boldness that we need to carry out your instructions, to go tell, to go teach, to go train. Let us celebrate as others come into fellowship with us and with relationship, into relationship with you through your son, Jesus Christ. Father, of all the things, of all the things that you taught us about love, about caring, about giving, and, and serving others, one of the things that you really stressed was how important it was to go out and reach the lost, to be able to train up uh, and make disciples. And that's, it, it seems to us that that makes sense, but the bigger story is that disciples make disciples. We make disciples. And so you used us, you used the church, you used believers as your plan of allowing your church to be able to expand, to be able to grow for your kingdom, to be able to come here. And as honest and open and simple as that is, as a church we fail. As your people, we have failed. We we haven't done. We we haven't gone out and done the thing that that you told us to do. Father, this this during this time that we've set aside to to worship you this morning, remind us, tap us on the shoulder, uh, 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 speak to us through your word, speak to us, whisper in our ear. What is it that we need to do in order to do the thing that you've called us to do? See, it's not just to love people. Yes, that's important. But it's also to teach others how to love so, so that the entire world might come to know you, to recognize how incredible you are. Father, I ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. The same Holy Spirit that was poured out at Pentecost, that gave Peter the boldness to be able to uh, preach. I ask that you give that same, that same amount or even more to everybody that's gathered here so that we might be able to receive, that we might be able to be filled so much that we can't be quiet about what it is that you've done, that we might become and remain rooted and established in the love that you provided. Remind us that it is time to come home. We pray these things in the blessed holy.
song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever sing. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Sing holy and holy. There is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes. In wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing, worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Yes, we live for you And holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder And show
sing thank you. Thank you, Jesus, just as I am, I come. Hallelujah, oh, what amazing love. Maybe seated. One of my one of my favorite stories um, is about the woman that uh, lived by herself, and you know she got tired of the quietness around, and so in order to uh, keep her some company, she went to the store and she bought her a parrot. And um, so it was the talking bird, and uh, she was she was so excited about it, and she took it home. And then the very next day, she showed back up at the store. Uh, with her, uh, with with the parrot, and says, you know, this is no good. I, I, this bird doesn't talk. And so the pet owner says, well, you know, do 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 you have a mirror in the cage? Because if you'll if you'll get that uh, bird a mirror, and you put it in there, bird will look and uh, see itself in there, and it'll just talk up a storm. So the lady bought a mirror, uh, goes home, puts it in the cage with the bird, and still nothing. A couple days go by. She's agitated. She goes into the store, store and tells the store owner, says, this bird does not talk. I want to return this bird. And, and the guy looked and says, well, does your bird have a ladder? See, so your bird, no, it doesn't have a ladder. Well, what you need, it, because what it does is that bird, it'll go up that ladder, down that ladder, and just be so happy. And this happy, content bird will talk, talk your ears off. So the lady buys a ladder, goes home, puts it in a cage. Still nothing. A couple days go by, go, goes back and says, hey, hey, <laughs> you sold me this bird. This bird doesn't talk. And says, hey, this bird have a swing. What your bird needs a swing. See what? You'll put that swing in there in the, um, in the uh, cage. It'll swing, it'll swing, it'll swing. It'll get so relaxed and a relaxed bird. That bird will talk and talk and talk. Talk your ears off. Lady buys the swing. Takes it home, puts it in there. A few days later, a lady comes in, and she's her her disposition has changed quite a bit. At that she's kind of sad, and she walks in, and she says, "The bird died." And the owner is absolutely owner, pet store owner. He's uh, shop owner. He's so uh, he's shocked at, at what he says, and says, "Well, says well, I'm sorry that he's died. That surprises me." Says, "Well, you know, did he ever say anything?" And the lady says, "Yes." Right before he died, the parrot looked at me and says, did they sell any food at that pet store? <laughs> We're continuing this message series. Some of you will get it later. <laughs> See, she's always like 10 seconds behind. Um we, we're, we're getting to the tail end of this message series called uh, Established. And we're looking at what it means to become and stay rooted in the love of God. We started out looking at the concept of eternal life. And I don't know if you picked up on it, but it's pretty well popped up every single, every single message. And it'll pop in here even today. We looked at John 17 where Jesus' high priestly prayer and Jesus says, eternal life, I, I come and I do these things so that you may have eternal life. And he says, and this is it. Knowing God is eternal life. And, uh, and I've, I've told you, one of my, one of my pet peeves, I, I guess I can say that about religion, is that it's all about, you know, uh, when we all, one day, one day, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. But yet, right now, you're on your own, buddy. <laughs> right now, just suffer through it, and, and that's not it. He, and, and Jesus was trying to say that you can have eternal life knowing God. You can have that in the here and now, right now. And my heart grieves because, you know, we talk about we don't want people to go to hell. I see people living in hell right here on earth right here because, uh, because they don't know God or 
or we know God and we, we don't do those things that we know that we need to do in order to uh, help uh, their life get better. Uh, then we explored the truth that if you want to have a relationship with God, you've got to listen to him. And we hear those promptings all the time, but we have excuses. I don't have the time or, you know, well, that's just be awkward to walk over there and, and ask that lady if I can do anything for her. Right, those promptings that 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 um, that God gives us, and then we looked at the fact that communication is a two way street. Yes, we're supposed to listen, but you know we can talk to God, we can petition Him, we can listen. Uh, um, I've shared this uh, several times before. Um, uh, Pope John Paul II, who's passed away now, but John Paul II, uh, his, the number one, he would pray like eight, nine, ten hours a day. And the number one word in his prayer, do you know what it was? I said I've said it several times. You know, nobody listens? John Paul II, his number one word in his prayer life was yes. See, he listened to God, and then he says, yes. Yes, I hear you, and yes, I'll try to do that thing. But uh, two weeks ago, we talked about the, the idea of serving people. And uh, as we serve God... Uh, as we serve others, that's our way of expressing our love for God. And uh, we looked at the concept of if we have experienced God's love ourselves, then we ought to act like it. Somebody ought to, ought to be able to see that we have been um, uh, transformed by the love of God. So last week, we, we talked about this whole concept of walking with God. And if we're going to do that, <coughs> then we need to be walking with others in humility. We've got to be real. We've got to humble ourselves before others. We've got to make ourselves vulnerable. Well, the problem is people hurt you. People will hurt you. And so the, 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 the people that we, we get hurt, and so we try to stay away from people, but it's through people that we will experience the love of God. We either either by loving on them and serving them, or them actually turn around in in uh, loving and and serving you. And so today, what we're going to be looking at is uh, uh, one of the most famous passages of all the scripture that's uh, uh, recorded in the Bible. There are 28 chapters in Matthew's gospel, and we're going to go all the way back to um, uh, chapter 28. We're going to be beginning in verse 16. And uh, what we're going to be looking at is what's commonly known as the Great Commission. And it's the very last thing that Jesus shares with his followers, with his disciples. Um, you know, he's completed his ministry and um, he, he's, he's um, uh, uh, died on the cross, buried, resurrected. And so he's come back and he's, he's, taught, uh, he's taught his disciples and walked with them for the 40 days. And now he's about to ascend into heaven. And so here we have the resurrected Jesus standing on a, on a mountainside about to ascend to heaven uh, and for the last time until he comes back. And this is, this is what he says, Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20, and I'm reading out of the message translation. Meanwhile, the 11 disciples were on their way to Galilee, headed for the mountain, mountain Jesus had set for their reunion. The moment, they saw, the moment they saw him, they worshipped him. Some, though, held back, not sure about worship, about risking themselves totally. Jesus, undeterred, went right ahead and gave, gave his charge. God authorized and commanded me to commission you. Go out and train everyone you meet far and near in this way of life marking them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, then instruct them in, in the practices of all I have commanded you. I'll be with you as you do this day after day after day, right up to the end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So uh, the disciples see the resurrected Jesus standing before them, and um, uh, what does it say their response was? What did they do? Do I need to put it back up? They worship. They 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 worship him, and uh, isn't that isn't that wonderful? When they they see him, 
uh, once again, and they know who he is and, and know what it is that he's done, and um, uh, they worship him. But uh, a, a perfectly appropriate and a great response to that. But what's troubling are the few words in the scripture right after that. It says, some though. Right. Some though. Not, not everybody, but some though. Held back, not sure about worship, about risking, risking themselves totally. Some translations will say, some of the more trans, um, traditional translation will say, some doubted. <coughs> Anytime God is on the move, anytime you, you see or understand, or even if you don't understand that God is at work, some are going to worship. Anytime there's a God thing going on, there are going to be people who will show up and they will worship that thing. You know the other truth? Some are going to hold back. Some are not going to be involved with that. And then some of us that, that show up for worship, some of us that show up for God type things, we look around and one of the things we do is we see the ones that aren't there. And our heart, our heart uh, groans, our spirits weep because we, we, we see what's in front of us. And so one of the challenges that, that we have as believers is that we can't allow the ones that are not to Take away the focus on what it is that we that we need to be looking at, um, because here here's what's interesting in in this passage is that Jesus, when he does this in the presence of worshipers and doubters, he's undeterred. He he goes on, and that's what the scripture said today. He was undeterred. Um, Jesus, knowing that God was at work, see, Jesus got the pic, big picture, and he knows it's that, and so he shares this information. God authorized and commanded me to commission you. And here's the charge or the command that he shared. Go out and train everyone you meet, far and wide, in this way of life. In what way of life? The things that we've been talking about for the past however many, however many weeks, the more traditional translations will say, go make disciples. Uh, but I love the way that the message translation reads, um, train everyone you meet uh, far and near. How? In this way of life. In this way of life. And first you have, to, if you have to know it in order to teach it to someone else. So a disciple, uh, a follower of Jesus Christ is someone who has met, who knows, and is following Jesus. A disciple has met, knows, And it's following. See, we, we, can, we, can, we can meet and we can know and not be following. But a disciple is, is one that, that's done those three. So as, as the church, our major role, our major function ought to be able to help people meet Jesus. Our major function ought to be to help them know and then also to help them to follow Jesus. See, in our example, we have to be living out of that example ourselves. Oh, Jesus, I know him. He's a friend of mine. Right? Uh, we, we, we ought to be living that thing out. And the way that we word that here at this church is through our mission statement. Living intentionally in a Christ-like manner to bring glory to God. See, you know it. Are we following that thing? See, we've met him. We know him. Are, are we following through in that? But then in the scripture in Matthew, uh, it said that uh, we are to mark them through baptism, baptizing them in the name. You know what? You'll never catch me in the pool uh, about to take somebody under the water without saying those three things. I baptize you in the name of the... Right? Because, because that's what we're instructed to do. So uh, here in, in the scripture, uh, uh, Jesus has completed his ministry. Uh, he's, uh, his ministry, here, his mission and ministry here on earth. And he has done some absolutely incredible things. Um, uh, he, he, he's made the lame, those that can't walk, he's healed them, allowed them to walk. He's taken those that can't see, 
He's allowed them to be able to see. Those that can't hear, he says, hear. He's healed them of those things. He's raised people from the dead. Somebody that dead as dead can be. And he's brought them back to life. Give, uh, breathed life in, into them. He, he fed thousands and thousands of people with just a little bit of fish and a little bit of bread. He's done all of those things. He's taught his disciples incredible things. He's made the scriptures of the Old Testament come to life. He's done all those things. He died on the cross. He died for our sins. He's uh, uh, dead, buried, resurrected. He's done all those things. And so now, after all of those things, right before he leaves this earth, what does he say? The very last thing. What does he tell them? Go out and train everyone, uh, everyone you meet far and near in this way of life. Marking them by, bapti- by, by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. That was what he thought was the most important thing. Oh yeah, before I leave. And, and that's what he said. So who... Is this passage about? Who is he concerned about? What? The disciples? <laughs> he says, train everyone in this way of life, marking them by baptism. Then instruct them. Well, who's them? I mean, if Jesus said it, then I think we ought to know who is them. Well, uh, I, I guess them is anyone that's not us. Well, who's us? Well, I think in the church, we, we see us as being believers, those that are already, already are, have already, well, followers of Jesus. But, you know, it's interesting, uh, so believers, uh, disciples, uh, followers, and then that would be us, and then what he's talking about is those that are them. It's interesting in this case because I guess us used to be them before we were us. R- right? We, we were them until us came to us, them, and taught us, trained us to become us, or trained them, which is us, to become us. So that we could go out as us. Clear? <clears throat> but we're supposed to reach out. And, and, and our, our, our goal or our, our charge is to reach out to them. So that we can bring them uh, to, to a place or a relationship with, with, with Jesus himself, themselves. So that they can become us. Um. Sometimes we get comfortable with us and not so comfortable with them. Do you know that it's very, very possible that we can come here together as us and them be here? Right here with us. One of the things that comes to mind, and we'll, uh, uh, Kayla will talk, address it next week, our children. Are they them or us? Yes. You, you see, they're, they're currently, some of them are, are currently them. And, and I think it's important that we train up, uh, Scripture uh, talks about it all the time, train up a child in the way that they should go, right? Well, so, so, so yes, it's almost like they're, they're us in training or us in the preparatory stage, but they're us, but yet we still have to pour in to them and um, you have some them in your household. You have some them as your neighbors and where you work. Them are, them are everywhere. Them are everywhere. Do you see them? And our command is to go out and train and teach them. So where do you find them? Uh, in 1992, um, a Los Angeles County parking control officer, we don't have those around here, 
But in bigger cities, they have people that take care of just uh, traffic enforcement and parking violations. Uh, but this officer ran across a brown El Dorado Cadillac illegally parked next to a curb. It was street sweeping days. You don't know what that is, but uh, it, you know, you, on this day you don't park on this side of the road because the street sweeper is going to be coming by and sweeping the curb. And the officer uh, completely ignored the man that was sitting behind the steering wheel as he writes up the citation for being illegally parked. And he goes over and you know writes out the ticket and uh, reached inside the the car because the window was down. And he places the ticket on the dashboard, and the driver of the car didn't even argue about it. Didn't, 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 there, no argument, uh, no excuses as to why he was parked there, you know, uh, but it was for good reason. Uh, the driver of the car had been shot 10 to 12 hours prior and was sitting in the car, this is a true story, sitting in the car, slightly leaned forward slowly becoming stiff as a board. He was dead. And the officer, so preoccupied with ticket writing, that he ignored the condition of the person that was right there in front of him. Didn't even notice anything out of the ordinary. Got back in his car and drove off. Write somebody else a ticket. Ready? There are people all around you they're in need of eternal life. And Jesus says that's what? Knowing God. There are people all around you. And they're dead to their sins and their transgression is what the scripture would say. They're, 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 and they're right there in front of us. And we, we, don't even un, we don't even pick up on that there's anything else. Why? Because we got stuff to do. We've got stuff to oh, I'm so busy. And so I'm not even paying attention to the need that, that, that we're, we're more worried about their offenses well, if I go out, well, they're them, so they're not us, and go out and we're so worried about what this person did wrong or what that person did wrong or this one, and we're looking at that rather than looking at how is it that we enter into a loving relationship with them and train them up in such a way that they can get out of the dead position that they're in and offer them what God offers, which is eternal life, life, life eternal. And people don't need a ticket that we're so willing to ride out. What people need is a Savior. And if we're rooted and established in the love of God, that ought to be something that we can go out and share with somebody in, in a loving way so that they might be able to turn around and do the same thing. Those that are out there, you know them? Them? They have no idea what it means to be rooted and established in love. But you should. You should. And if you don't, we need to fix it. The truth is that um, some of us get uh, so excited. Uh, we worship. We see Jesus. We worship. Um, but that's it. We don't finish well. We don't finish well. We don't, we don't walk it out. And um, yes... There are some that hold back, not sure about worship, um, about risking themselves totally. But I, I truly believe that it's time that we walk forward in boldness as Jesus commanded. But sometimes we don't want to have the conversations because they're hard. It's interesting that I was talking to a travel agent um, just, a, just a couple days ago when I came in. And I talked to a new girl right after it. And um, we were talking about uh, possible travel in late 2022. And um, she very, very quickly says, hey, hey, are you and your wife vaccinated? Here this woman that I've never, ever met before realizes that where we are going, there are going to be some issues that might cause harm to us. And she cares, this late Susan, I've never met Susan, but Susan knows that there's something that can help me 
that can help protect me to bring me back safe. So she just spits it out there. How many of you go around, you know, well, you do now. COVID taught us a lot. Get in somebody's business. But used to, you never ask, hey, you know, have you got this? You know, have you taken that? And it, it, but, but she just spits it out. And she wanted me to be prepared to handle whatever it is that came my way. And, and, and she, she offered. And so immediately I came back and I said, hey, hey, new girl. <laughs> Isn't it funny that we can run around, we can talk about health issues. Things, you know, you don't talk about health, you don't talk about money. You know, you know you, we have our list of things that you don't talk about, but now we do. And it, isn't it interesting that we can sit there and we can share, we can ask those questions and those probing questions when we see them, but we can't be bold enough to talk about our faith. When we see somebody that's in a dead condition or somebody that's sitting there struggling and we can't be bold enough to offer them Christ. Um, bold enough to ask, you know, is, is there anything that, that we can do? We see people in their situations and we know that they're grappling for this and they're grappling for that. But honestly, what we, what we know that they need is to know Jesus himself. At 9.15 this morning, over in the education building, we had some children and we had very few adults seeking to come together to learn about Jesus Christ, to get steeped in that, to be trained up in the faith so that they might be able to go out. And I'm being charged with making disciples. You are being charged. Jesus, last thing he said before he left, train people up, make disciples, go out and change the world. And we're at the house. Sometimes we get so busy in our lives that we don't actually look around and see people struggling in what it is they're doing. And some of us, we don't feel, I don't feel trained up enough to be able to do that. Well, we're offering you training. We're offering you that. Some of us, we're so caught up in making sure that our children have mirrors. Our children have ladders and our children have swings to go on. But we're not making sure that they have Jesus Christ in their life. And we become complacent. And that's not, Jesus didn't say, I'm going up to heaven. You guys just hang out and do whatever you want to do. He said, go out and change this world. Go make disciples for me. Because, you know what, later on he's going to say, I'm coming back. And meanwhile, we're going to be able to say, well, you know, here's the mirrors, here are the swings, here are the ladders. New girl and I recently, we shared with with someone. You know, we we hope that when your children go off to college, make sure they take their mirror, their ladder, and their swing. But what they're really going to need to take with them is Jesus. And and I and you know what and I, and I I I, I yeah, no I don't mind being bold to say it. We're not doing proper job of training up and that was the very last thing that he told us to do allowing us to become and remain rooted in the love of God in such a way that Sundays ought to be the, the ought to be the easiest time to come in get filled and be able to go out Lord gracious heavenly father we thank you so much for a message you have brought very last thing uh, you said so I assume it's pretty important we ought to be training up um, disciples making disciples for you people have become uh, too complacent uh, we your church have uh, we've gotten We've gotten used to, uh, we have an excuse as to why we can't be there. Father, we walk around as if we're, 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 well, you know, I'm scared of this, I'm scared of that. Yet somehow, 
we can go hang out with 80, 90, 100,000 people in a, in a, at a football field and it'd be okay. Father, take us to a place. Take us to a place to where we recognize the shortcomings, where we, where we recognize that we've become lazy, where we come and we, we recognize that, that um, uh, this excuse or that excuse will get us out and then it'll be okay. But Father, the only way that it's going to be okay is for us to come into relationship with you, to be able to uh, fully be rooted and established. We have children here that, that, that deserve to be trained and sometimes we don't have enough adults to actually be there to teach them. And for that, I, I, I apologize. I'm sorry. You are God. And you're worthy to be worshipped. You have way more wisdom than any of us will ever have. And you are faithful. Teach us to be give us the boldness that we need to go out live our life for you follow you and make disciples we pray these things in the blessed holy name of jesus amen the altar's open this morning for whatever it is that uh, uh, you would like him um, to uh, share with you if you've never accepted jesus christ as lord and savior if you never come forward and said i believe and i want to be baptized i can't think of a better time for that to happen i would love to uh, speak with you pray with you uh, if you're not part of this church we don't have members here we have partners in ministry karen's here would love to get some basic information from you and um altered lord's open Every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name the only one who could ever save worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you and holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you And holy, there's no one like you There's none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder And show
and holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show Now it's time to go. In